Steam stands for Multi Arcade Machine Emulator and it's been around for over 20 years and runs on about every single device there is. Old and new computers, handhelds, game consoles, micro consoles, there's probably a port to your favourite device. I first heard about MAME when it came out in the late 90s, but it wasn't really until the first ports to the original Xbox was when I started to take notice. But not all MAMEs are made equal, and not all games in MAME run at the same level of performance. Over time, MAME's emulation accuracy has increased at the expense of performance. This has been fairly significant. In recent years, the team has implemented dynamic recompilers to combat this, but this is usually targeted towards x86 only. So if you want a port of MAME to non-x86 based consoles or handhelds, you typically need to go back many versions to find the sweet spot between compatibility and performance. And for me, this sweet spot has always been MAME version 0.72. Why? From its arcade release in 1993 to September 1394, dubbed Mortal Tuesday, when the console ports were released, Mortal Kombat 2 is probably one of my favourite arcade games ever. I own many versions of the same game. The Super NES, the Sega Genesis, the Sega Saturn, I even owned the original arcade board at one point. Mortal Kombat 2 and the Midway Williams games can bring even the most powerful systems to their knees with the emulation. This is all due to the sound hardware known as DCS. DCS stands for Digital Compression System, an advanced soundboard that was used in many Williams Midway arcade and pinball games. The DCS soundboard provides multi-channel 16-bit digital audio with independent control over the volume, playback and loops. Indiana Jones marks the debut of Williams' DCS sound system. All of the game audio you'll hear on this tape was played by the new DCS board. Each channel can dynamically play back anything from an entire piece of music to sound effects. These features make it very popular for pinball machines and arcade machines. But because of its unique hardware and power, as you can imagine, emulating the DCS in MAME is very expensive in terms of processing. Earlier versions of MAME used speed hacks in order to offset this expense, and I've always suspected that the official Xbox ports of Mortal Kombat 2 that were unlockables in Shaolin Monks, and also came with Midway's Greatest Hits compilation, was some flavour of the main Mortal Kombat 2 port running an earlier version with the DCS hack for performance. The last version of MAME before the DCS sound driver was rewritten to more accurately emulate its hardware was 0.72. After this version, the DCS emulation slowed down significantly, and 0.72 is my pick of the best version of MAME. So, back in 2011, I decided to port MAME 0.72 to the modded Xbox 360 for the sole intent of being able to run Mortal Kombat 2 Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and many of those classic Midway arcade games at full frame rates with full sound effects and music. Now, I decided to recently unearth the same source code and port MAME 0.72 to the Nintendo Switch. Now, you may or may not be aware that there's already a port of MAME to the Nintendo Switch running under Retro NX, so aren't we wasting our time here? Well, let's take a look at how it plays. Round one, fight. <laughs> Very impressive and well done, but I'm a big believer in giving people a choice. Retro Arch will certainly get the job done, but I'm not a big fan of its interface and navigation. I want a simple and easy to use interface to jump into gameplay as quickly as possible. Now my port of MAME 0.72 also includes updated drivers that supports many more games not found in the original 0.72 release. And finally, giving people more homebrew is a good thing. Plus, the more emulators out there for the Switch, the better. So, porting my older 0.72 Xbox 360 code was an interesting experience. The first thing I wanted to do was make the UI recognizable if you've used the 360 version in the past. So, side by side, this is how they look.
Now, I've never enjoyed UI design in code, but I wanted to ensure there was a suitable way to launch ROMs from the browser. For this, I used XOR Troll's custom UI library, which is an easy way to build an interface for the Switch. This came in very handy, and after a few hours of playing around with that and learning how to embed assets into the Switch's executable via the ROM FS, I had a basic menu structure working and my list of ROMs were being loaded from the SD card. Next was the meat and potatoes of compiling MAME 0.72. For this, I noticed some fans had released updates of my port to the Xbox 360, which contained more drivers and fixes, so I used this as my baseline. Now, as always, compiling code for the Switch isn't too bad, as long as you have a make file to support it. A make file is essentially a batch file that's a set of instructions on how to compile and build a program for a target device. So I took the existing one that came with MAME and modified it slightly to build a Switch executable. It only took me a few hours of hacking and I was able to get it to build. It didn't take long before I had MAME 0.72 compiled up for the Switch. However, since I was porting the Xbox 360 code, none of the graphics, sound and input code would work. Since DirectX isn't a thing on the Switch, we have to use LibNX instead. Now I could have taken the easier option of using SDL2 to manage all this for me, but instead I wanted to use direct LibNX API calls to have less overhead. So at this point I have the main ROM browser and UI, but I still have no way of loading ROMs. Since MAME 0.72 is compiled without any video routines or any file routines, I have to start attaching them together. Now, the first thing I add is the file IO routines. Now, this part isn't too complicated. In order to test that my ROMs were loading, I put some simple debug into the main loop to see if the emulation was executing and not crashed. Next up are the video routines. LibNX sadly does not support 3D acceleration, so I had to do it the old school way by taking the internal bitmap from MAME and plotting each pixel to an output frame buffer. This is probably not the most optimized way of doing this, but it gets the job done, at least until GPU support comes along, which will mean the code will not be needed in favor of just rendering directly to a texture and then being able to manipulate it via shaders. After I got the video routines to work, the first test I noticed that my colors were incorrect. Now a quick tweak of extracting my RGB values fixed that right up. Now because MAME emulates many different arcade games, I still have yet to support vertical games as well as other bitmap types. But for now, the popular horizontal 15 and 16 bit bitmaps are supported fine. And the last thing that I need to add is the ability to render the output in its correct 4-3 aspect ratio. Nothing makes me more unhappy than seeing an emulator with a stretched image across a 16x9 display. So I take some time and care to add the 4-3 aspect ratio code into the emulator, but I will probably add an option to do a full screen stretch mode if that's something that people are interested in. Next up, I add the inputs. Again, my motto is get something working first and add it later. So I add support for single player, making sure that the buttons are mapped to the Switch Joy-Cons and a Pro Controller, and you can adjust the buttons in game by selecting the main menu. Now, of course, one player is fine, but because it's an arcade emulator, we certainly want two or more players being able to play on the Switch. So I go ahead and add players two, three, and four which means that you can play four player Ninja Turtles and other arcade games that support up to four players. Now, last but not least is sound. Now I'll let you in on a little secret. I absolutely hate adding sound support to an emulator. It's one area where I struggle. I usually leave this till last, but we certainly do not want to disregard it. We don't want to be playing in complete silence or with choppy sound, which will most likely take you out of the arcade experience. So why do I dislike adding the sound API so much? To me, it's like painting with a blindfold on. Sound emulation sort of works like this. The emulator, in this case MAME, will generate an audio buffer from its sound chip that's being emulated. 
that buffer gets fed to the sound API to play the sound. So the internal buffer from MAME gets fed to the sound API to play the sound, but it needs to send the correct number of bytes to the buffer every 60 frames or the frame rate of the game. And it needs to take into consideration any overflow that may be sent to the next buffer or in the case of any slowdown that may occur in the emulator. The audio buffer may also be in a different format or frequency. For example, the audio chip may only support 16-bit audio at 22 kHz, but the sound API may only support 48 kHz. Therefore, the internal sound buffer must be resampled or remixed in order for the sound API to play back correctly. Now, I understand the theory about how a sound API should work, ensuring the sound doesn't pop or crackle, but writing code around it can get very tricky for me, and my first few attempts usually don't go very well. Now, I don't claim to be an expert in everything when it comes to porting, so I take a look at some other Switch emulators for inspiration and help, and I didn't want to release anything that was half-baked, so I ended up coming up with something that I think sounds really good. Have a listen for yourself. Bulls. The Chicago Bulls versus the Vancouver Grizzlies. So with those three main areas completed, our MAME 0.72 port is ready for release. Now let's go ahead and test our Mortal Kombat games and see how well they run on the Nintendo Switch. Other games that support the DCS sound is 1996's NBA Hangtime. It looks and plays at full speed with excellent sound and graphics. And finally, because this is MAME after all, there's 4,000 other ROMs that you can pick from. So go ahead and check out my port of MAME NX for the Nintendo Switch. I think you guys will like it. So guys, what did you think of my port of MAME 0.72 to the Nintendo Switch? I would call this a success. My target goal was to be able to play those Midway games at full speed. Now, I was a little unsure if the Switch had enough CPU horsepower to be able to pull it off, but it clearly does and it has a ton of processing power, a lot more than I initially thought. And that's one of the reasons that makes the Switch such an awesome device for homebrew. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I have links in the description below of my GitHub page. You can download this today and play around with it. Now, I will say that the port that I have currently is not feature complete. I'm still adding more features to it as we go over time, but please download it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I wanna hear your thoughts, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. Is it a waste of time? You know, do you prefer Retro NX versus something like this? that's okay if you do you know I love to give people choices with homebrew you know you don't have to like my stuff but I do know a lot of people are looking forward to something like this so guys I hope you enjoyed this video once again let me know what you thought about it in the comments below as always don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video bye for now
Midway presents 